Welcome everyone to Rise Up Gaming's first inaugural video game internet safety segment. Today we have the lovely Miss Carrie Hoskins Branson. Uh, she had mocapped the Mortal Kombat character Sonya Blade. And during the week we'll have other guests such as Scott Patterson and John Parrish, also of Mortal Kombat. So, Carrie, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, well, what do you want to know? Jeez. Uh, <laughs> Mom of four, artist now, painter. Painter? Um, yeah, just took that up about a year ago. So that's what I've been doing full time. It kind of took off and I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when stuff like that happens. Yeah, kind of your life takes a new direction without even knowing. <laughs> <laughs> so give our viewers a little bit of a tip why video game safety and internet safety is important to you? Well, it's important to me because I, I have four children. Um, I'm constantly monitoring what they're doing online and um, making sure that people aren't, you know, predators aren't out there predat predating them <laughs> and um, that they're just using the safe protocol. I don't want them, like they're on Facebook, they're not allowed to have um, a friend's lifts over this number depending on their age and um, Instagram they're not allowed to let people follow them who they don't know um, and you know after this this whole thing with um, the Brazil you know how um, change Brazil I had a lot of friend requests and of course they started re friend requesting my children also um, and they weren't allowed to accept anything any any people that they didn't know so I'm constantly on top of that, and um, it does concern me quite a bit, you know, especially, you know, girls can be so mean at certain ages, and um, I need to let my daughter know that, you know what, I don't tolerate this, I don't tolerate you talking like that, and you should not tolerate it from your friends any at any time whatsoever. So, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's probably a constant daily thing that we, that we monitor, you know, it's, it's never ending. Okay. Well, I mean, that's that's a great a great way to be, especially as a parent. I mean, I'm a stepfather of three and a parent of two. Um, I'm constantly, oh, even my daughter's 18, I'm, I'm constantly on her about the internet safety and talking to people she don't know, especially on sites I'm not a part of. You know, I worry about predators a lot. And uh, that, that is a very big concern, especially with the video games now where the media is blaming violent video games for kids doing the most ridiculous things. Which leads me to my next question. Um, given the fact that you mocap Sonya Blade in a historic yet violent video game, which spawned the birth of the uh, the rating system, how do you think that impacted your life, and how do you think it actually evolved, and as a violent video game as a whole? You know, I, I when I toured the United States for Mortal Kombat the live tour, we were constantly, constantly questioned about that, and. Um, it was actually, you know what, if you do talk to your kids and you show them between realism and fantasy, there shouldn't be any question about when they're playing a video game, whether that's real or whether it's fantasy. And you have to be able to tell the difference between the two. If you can't, yeah. you should be playing the game. Absolutely. And also, Mortal Kombat did have, it had a message, you know, believe it or not. You know, a lot of kids, they would look at us and, and they would look up to us, you know, they're, they're more, because we were actually people back then, you know, you had real people in those games. So people looked up to you. And um, when, when, you have, when you have that with a, a child, um, they want to do what you're doing. So, of course, they're getting into martial arts. And what does martial arts teach? You know, it teaches self-discipline. It, it teaches respect for others, respect for yourself, you know, so the message of Mortal Kombat actually had a hidden message that a lot of people didn't see unless they were into it. Mm -hmm. Now, um, evolving, you know, in, into more violent and violent video games, it still dates back to the system rating was born. I mean, do you think it was the right time for the ESRB rating system to come around when Mortal Kombat hit the arcades and the home system? I mean, do you think it's a beneficial system overall? Well, yeah, it's always good to have a rating system, especially um, when a parent is buying a video game for their child. You don't want to be, you know, buying an adult video game for a, a six-year-old. 
Um, same with movies. When you bring your kid to a movie, you want to you want to know by the rating system whether you, it's appropriate to bring your child to that movie. So I I think it's a great thing. Excellent, Jean. I mean, if you want to ask anything, go right ahead. Um, no, I just, I mean, you pretty much are knocking, like, I was going to ask a question, then she knocks them out of the park, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, I mean, I just, what are your opinions on the nature of fighting games now, actually, um, would be my next question, um, because it seems like the all that they're doing now is uh, adding more gore, and they're not really adding that, that same message, I guess oh, you could say. Just, you know what, it's all the way the media is today, it's all sensationalism. It's so over the top, it's so unrealistic that you just, you have to know that the difference between realism and fantasy. And, and I mean, just watching TV, you know, everything is so sensationalized now. It's so, it's so, it's so hard to monitor that, monitor that with your children. So I think the best thing that you can do is just instill in them and tell them, you know, this is right, this is wrong don't do this, you know, you really have to stay on top, to, on top of things with your children and talk to them and know exactly what they're doing, especially on the internet, who they're talking to and, and what they're talking about, going through text messages, you know, it's not an invasion of privacy, you have to know what your child is doing, it's just another form of media, it's different these days than it was 20 years ago, you know. What do your kids think um, that about you playing Sony Blade in, in, in Mortal Kombat? Like, what are their reactions when you, when you found it out? Or, you know, they're, they're ecstatic that my mom was in a video game or, you know? Yeah, it doesn't work as well as it did, you know, when they were like five years old, where we could say, you know, if you don't do this, I'm gonna give you the kiss of death. <laughs> <laughs> they don't believe it anymore. <laughs> but um, now they just, you know, they'll go on YouTube and Google it and show their friends or something like that. And it's, it's funny to them. It's um, I don't think they really realized how big it was back then because it has pretty much fizzled out, um, you know, for me. And um, so it's 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 kind of like what happened 20 years ago, you know. And and for a kid, it's hard for them to even fathom what that was back, back then. So I'm still just a mom to them, really. <laughs> I'm telling you, if my mom was in Mortal Kombat and I was a little younger, oh, let me rephrase that, a lot younger. I'd be like, my mom didn't give me the kiss of death, you would knock it off. Yeah. You know, or something like that. It'd be, it'd be a long standing joke, you know. And But, you know, as parents as a whole, you know, they're the other half of the solution. I've talked over the last couple of days, even be, uh, actually during when I was my talk with you on Facebook, I've talked to a lot of professional players and, and people who are in the game development scene. And we discussed, you know, there's, there's two things that have to happen with violent video games media has to have the right portrayal. <clears throat> but we have the ESRB system and the other half has to be parents who actually really monitor the child such as what you do because if you only get half the solution the other half the problem's still there and the kids are out running around rampant and stealing cars and blaming it on Grand Theft Auto and body slamming their friends through tables like on WWE 2014 or whatever it may be you know and right. parents have to do their job and that's that's what we're you know we're trying to get the reaction of okay if you as a parent allow your kid to go out and body slam their friends through tables, what kind of a parenting job are you doing? Right, exactly. You know, and we keep our, we keep our, um, the gang stuff in, in a, in an open area, in a family area. So they're not going back into the room and hiding and, and playing these games that we don't know about. Right. So everything is very social in our house and it's very open and, um, I just, that's just one thing that we don't have to worry about, you know? Keeping we, the Keeping the games in the family room, would that also revolve around the, the age where we have the digital downloads now through the consoles, like Xbox 360 and PS3? Would, okay. that, play, would that play a factor? Let's say you, your children have a, P, a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox 360, and being that you can access the internet and download games from their system, right. does, that, does that play a factor of why you keep the consoles, these game systems, in the family room? Well, it's everything. You know, you hear these horror stories about you know, people getting to know people on, on, on their councils, you know, and they don't know who they are. They're, they think they're the same person that they are, the same age or whatever, and then they get to know them, and, you know, pretty soon it's, hey, let's meet, and pretty soon you don't know where your kid is. So mm -hmm. it's just, everything is just a precaution with us. We just try to really monitor everything that they're doing. That's really very and smart. Did you ever consider maybe not even, because uh, I have family members who don't even let their children 
have Xbox Live. Um, or any kind of, pro- like, the internet uh, availability. They just only let them play the games uh, there locally. Did, have, did you consider that at all? Well, I don't really have to worry about it because they're they're not really into that. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll, they'll get their games and they'll play it on, on the Xbox and, and that's it. You know, they're not really into the internet and downloading stuff and, and talking to other people. Right now it's just them amongst their friends playing together. Good. And that's why we like it. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> a lot of the biggest misconception is it's not just the games that people need to be aware of and how, how young the children are playing them, but when they're on the Xbox Live, for example, and you have people who are playing Call of Duty, they like to talk a lot, a lot of derogatory remarks, and that's one thing that rises up. We we are strongly against is is forms of um, defamation of that sort. We don't like bullying and, and sexism and, and discrimination, and that's what we stand up against. Um, I mean, personally, I don't stream because a lot of the times that's what happens to me because of, you know, look <laughs> is. <laughs> but um, do, your, yeah, do, you, do, you, do your children play a lot of games online where they use the headset to talk to people when they're playing games or they're just amongst their friends in the home and they're just playing the game by itself? Um, pretty much just amongst their friends playing by, on their own. Um, but those derogatory comments are not allowed at all in our household. Nothing. You know, we've, we've got two boys here who are disabled and, you know, nobody's allowed to say the R word. No one's allowed to say the G word, the N word, mm. you know, anything like that. It's just People don't realize is what I, I, I used to coach Special Olympics for almost all my life. My mom and I ran a big county program of that back home in Pennsylvania. And in a lot of states, the R word is actually deemed illegal and you can get arrested just for saying the word in that form of manner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've almost gotten into a bar fight because of that word. <laughs> you know, you ask them politely not to use the word, they continue to, and then you tell them why you don't like the word, and they still continue to, and then it starts to get personal. I agree. My, my oldest brother is mentally and physically challenged, and I don't. I take great offense to it. I got my first fight where I threw the first punch, regardless of my martial arts training, and yeah, <laughs> wasn't pretty. Yeah. I, I know that that girl walked out of the bar saying, you know what, I, I better watch my mouth from now on. And, and hopefully, you know, from now on, she'll think twice before she uses it. Yeah, Pennsylvania has a strong stance with that. Uh, we have the R word, the ban pretty much it's illegal. A lot of states are starting to adopt that same policy. And even what rise up, we don't allow any form of racial slur, uh, sexual term to derogatorize person's nature or anything, you know. and. People need to realize that even in gaming, when you're talking on a headset to another person who you've never met, these kind of words are really inappropriate. The parents just don't care. Yeah. Some parents. You know, so funny. You know, we could touch on this a little bit more. Um, it's so funny because on the computer, it's so easy to say, hey, you know what? I don't like that word. But when you're face to face, such an uncomfortable feeling about when somebody is in front of you using that you feel like you're guilty telling them not to use that word and really it should be the other way around you know they're offending you by using that word so why don't you open your mouth and speak and say hey you know what i don't like that word and usually when when i do say it to somebody else they're always very apologetic and and they don't realize yeah if if um if people actually realize that, that where they could open your open their mouth and say something i think we really get that word across a lot easier not to use those derogatory comments and that's pretty much our our whole goal i i mean honestly um i mean i went through things like that because uh, a lot of people uh, a lot of people don't know but like i walk with a limp i've had uh physical disabilities my whole life and i'll have people at the mall look at me like you know that I, I have some major problem and they'll say things like I I don't understand them and I and I turn around and I'm like are you kidding me <laughs> and sometimes I'll just look at my mom and I go did you hear that lady <laughs> you know stuff like that I mean and I feel like if you if you do if one person just does that it turns around and says excuse me I hear what you're saying it is offensive um, and even yeah. online like if you say that to one person and you get them to stop saying that or to think about what they're saying before they open their mouth, I think it has a huge widespread effect. Yep. Right. You know, half, half the time these people are trying to act like they're superior, you know, amongst their friends by putting somebody else down. And if that person would actually just turn around and say, I can hear you, you're offending me. 
you know, it embarrasses them and they'll think twice about doing it next time. I hope you know, so. I can particularly remember we were at a, at a, down the park when I was younger, my, took my older brother down there and my oldest brother is there with me. So it's me, my, my mentally challenged, physically challenged older brother. And then my oldest brother, who's built like a complete center block. <laughs> we were down there playing basketball with my brother because we did that once a week. We took him down the park for a couple hours and chilled out. And, and this kid was like, oh, look at the R word. And I said, excuse me? I was like, who are you and watch your mouth? And they're like, oh, oh, you know, who cares? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I care. That's my brother. So, you know, and a fight ensued because all they was asking to, hey, don't use that word. That offends me. Don't, don't right. even start that. Yeah. But when you have programs out there who who are an advantage, especially these children, like Special Olympics and other places, you know, if people would just stop running their mouths and get a little educated, they might realize that they would learn how really hurtful they're being, not just to special needs themselves, but people who care for these kids or or being derogatory in general. They don't realize how much scars they can really leave. Mm -hmm. Right. I think most of it's just um, ignorance. Yes, that is the word I didn't really like to say because I hate using that word, but it's it's what it is. It's pure ignorance. Well, I mean, where did, where did the R word come from? It came from a medical terminology. You know, well, it, it spawned before that with the word mongoloid, unfortunately, you know, and it progressed into that and, and got worse and got worse. And it's like, oh, wow. Yeah, and people don't, people that use it now don't really realize where the word derived from, why it did. and and the way that they're using it is actually putting somebody down. Yeah. Because, so, um, and when kids are playing these games that use a headset to communicate with their teammates or their friends or their family, and they spout these words off, whether it's the R word or to make fun of a girl gamer who completely kicks their ass, because I know quite a few, Gina's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's my superior. <laughs> um, Gina being one of them, there's a group of uh, ladies in a clan called Ladies to Die For. I've actually met a few of them, and they're really, really awesome female gamers, and they're really respectful people. I have a lot of mad respect for them. When you go on a game and you make fun of somebody because of who they are, because they're a girl kicking your butt, or you drop the R word, or cost me, you know, a derogatory term for something else, you don't really know these people, and you don't know if that's true, and you're really hurting them, you know? Okay. And like you said, when you people see human reaction, and when you say, hey, don't use that word, it offends me, it, they might go, oh, well, shoot, I'm sorry. Yeah, most that's, always. That's hopefully the goal for for everybody. I don't know, like, I, I feel like my job's done in a day. If I can get one person to say, oh, oops, you know, I maybe I shouldn't be saying that or acting that way, uh, whether it be in a video game or real life. You know, um, and then I'm like, okay, well, maybe they'll pass it on. Maybe they'll go to somebody else and be like, hey, you shouldn't say that. Like, I had this really yeah. embarrassing thing happen to me earlier. <laughs> Don't do that. So yeah. that's, I, I got it's kind of like a, a smile it's the way I look at it. Like when you smile at somebody, you kind of hope it's infectious where they go on, they smile on, and it kind of like, it travels. Yeah, right? I haven't smiled as much as I have since I've been with Rise Up and hanging out with Gina. I quit. I hate smiling and she makes me smile. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I hope I hope that that this kind of uh, internet safety and and in online in general and and real life courtesy, I guess, would be the word I would use. Kind of becomes infectious and we get back to where we used to be, where yeah. people were kind and generous. You know. <laughs> Or I could just use my husband's task tactic. We were at a party once with amongst friends and somebody used that word. And my head just kind of cocked to the side, like, did he just use that word with my husband? <laughs> and my husband, I saw him over there, he grabs onto his shirt and he goes, Don't use that word, I'm gonna punch you in the face. <laughs> you see, I, I like to use that tactic, but my wife does not like me getting violent because uh, training twelve years of training and I tend to just lose all sense of thought when somebody really offends me and I have to defend myself or attack somebody. I just, uh, not pretty. My wife would just totally well, kill me. His face. He was just kidding around, but he got his point crossed. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that's the thing with video games, even on the internet. I mean, if you're on Facebook talking to your friends, even if you know the person, you really, 
shouldn't have that mannerism to use those words, even with your friends in a joking manner. You should have that respect all the time, yeah. whether it's in or out of game or on Facebook, in, in school, or at work. I don't come on TeamSpeak to go, into my media, go, go to a meeting and call Gina derogatory names because, one, I'd get my ass kicked. And, two, I'd get fired. And, three, I'd, I'd be done. Uh, everything I've done in the gaming community would be just for nothing. You've got to have the mentality go, what, would that really benefit me in life by talking like this to anyone? Yep. Right. And Jeannie's too much of a sweetheart anyway. I couldn't make fun of her. Oh, you don't know me very well, Josh. <laughs> I, need, I, need, I, need to come, I need to come around more often. <laughs> oh. I mean. Yeah. I mean, that's why I wanted to kick it off with yourself. And then we also contact, I'm sure you know John Parrish, who played Jax. Yeah. Um, and Scott Patterson. Scott Patterson actually just finished a panel at the Screw Attack Gaming Convention in Dallas on violence in video games and proper conduct, along with Adam Sessler, who used to be on G4 Tech TV and G4 TV. And um, I can't remember her name. She goes by the nickname of oh, oh My, It's Pink, but I can't remember her actual name for the life of me. And they did a panel on violence in video gaming, which it was really successful. And that spawned me to get in contact with you and talk with John Parrish and Scott Patterson. And I have Daniel Piscina lined up. We were supposed to work on that before, but he had an event with Galloping Ghost and Doc Max, so that didn't work out too well. But I really are thankful you did step in here and help yeah. us out and give us more of an insight, not, not only as a video game actress, but as a parent, which is what we're really looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think what you guys do, are doing is great. You know, there really needs to be more sites like this. You know, you know, be the pioneer, be, you know, make yourselves big, because I think when parents find out more about you, you know, get that marketing going and stuff, um, I think it'll really take off in this this awareness. You know, we need something like this to help us. You know, a lot of parents aren't computer savvy. And I, a lot of times my, my son will say, I hate that my mom knows how to use computers. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, like she can check up on me when I do things. <laughs> yeah, but a, a lot of parents don't know. You know, they don't know how to check a cache folder. And, and they don't know how, you know, to go into the text messages and check them. And they really... There should be places where they should be able to learn how to do that. I try to teach my father how to use a computer. He is adamant against not even touching the power button. <laughs> Very adamant about it. And my mom's starting to get the hang of Facebook and using a computer. Oh, boy. Well, no, she she's okay because she'll sit and play her games when she's not doing the housework in the day. And, you know, and she's not doing her job or she, she dog sits every now and then. But if she has a technical issue, she'll call me up. And I'm like, okay, mom, just do this, this, and this. You're fine. You know, I, I want my mom to be computer savvy because she's there. I'm she's in Florida. I'm in Texas. So that's one of two things we have to communicate, either Facebook or cell phone. So yeah, yep. I think a lot of parents um, worry about invasion of privacy with their children. And I, um, I honestly think the other way around where the kids don't want their parents getting on their stuff on it, what they're doing because they don't want to get caught. Exactly. Right. You know, if you have something to hide, then your parents really should know your passwords and, and whatnot. Growing up, my parents didn't give me a computer. They didn't give me a cell phone. They didn't give me anything except for a pager. My <laughs> parents said, if I beef you, you don't call me, you're in trouble. Okay, right. well, yeah. I have, I skipped school one time and took a day bus trip from Pennsylvania to New York City thinking my mom wasn't going to I wasn't wasn't going to get called and my school called and my mom beat me here in the middle of Manhattan with no way to call her. I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm screwed. <laughs> so my parents used other means to keep tabs on me, make sure I wasn't doing anything stupid, which, of course, it worked because I got caught doing something stupid. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. that I, I, I agree with you. I feel like that, that what I'm sick of seeing in media right now is people blaming the video games and, and blaming the media for everything. When I, I feel like it just needs to be better educated parents and and better educated people as a group to know like this stuff is happening and it's happening not because of what they're doing it's happening because of be their behavior people human behavior that's not good um, and it, it's yeah so I mean my parents were awed me like bought it when I was a teenager <laughs> like I wasn't allowed to do anything read anything text anyone talk to anybody when they didn't know it and I think it worked out for the best because I know better than to go and be a vile person so um I I definitely agree with you and I I hope that more parents like get up and find out this stuff and and know about like ratings for not only tvs but movies and all kinds of stuff so that they can know what kind of media they should allow their children to have access to yeah, I know my mom and I go round and round. She thinks that, you know, 
my daughter's not 13, so she shouldn't be on Facebook. And I said, well, you know what? I've got six sisters and a brother. Um, I've got all these cousins. She's being watched. You know, and she's parents, being watched very closely. And, and um, you, have, you have to have a little trust in, in your kids do the right yeah. thing. If I don't, if I don't allow her to do it, she's going to try a way to do it without me knowing. Exactly. So I just monitor it and watch it. Um, if my son said he was going somewhere last week, and I checked um, his iPhone, you know, and find my iPhone, and I could see exactly where he is. And I'll call him up and say, "Why aren't you at so and so's house? You're at this place here." He's like, "How do you know that?" <laughs> <laughs> because I'm technically savvy. That's why. He's like, I and, and, and honestly, I gotta say, I admire your approach with your children on video game safety, internet safety. I really admire everything you're doing. You're giving them the rope. You're letting them see what they're gonna do. But yet, you have these rules in place in case of. I strongly admire what you're doing. Yeah, basically, our the whole thing about our family is just honesty. If you want to do this, you're gonna tell me that you're gonna do it, and we're gonna talk about it, and you know, we're gonna we're gonna know what's right and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My youngest stepdaughter is 18. She's starting college in July. I mean, it's, it's 45 minutes away. She's staying home, but she's always on her phone or on her iPod. And when she's texting someone at 11:45 at night, I'm like, um, "You told me you're laying down, going to bed. Who are you talking to?" And she told me, "Don't worry about it." I said, "You may have bought in your phone. You may have bought in your minutes, but you're in my home. If I don't approve, approve of you talking on the phone this late at night, I want your phone. You know, I, I don't want you messing around." And she knows I'm, I'm very protective over it because this world with the deviance over. Facebook and the internet, and even in society, you have to be extra careful and extra protective. Yeah, it's a different world today than it was 20 years ago. Yep. You know, our parents have no idea what's going on now with with um, trying to raise children now. You know, you, it's it's so funny because you, your instinct is to shelter them and and not let them find out about all of this. Right. But you really want your children to find out about these things. From somebody else other than you. No, you don't. You want them to know the truth. So sheltering them at this day and age is not going to help them. Mm -hmm. My opinion. You're actually right, though. Back in the day, I used to be able to go and roam around the street with my friends, and my parents would just come on the porch, flick the flick the house lighter, and go, "Hey, time to come home!" And yell, "Here I come, trotting along, tra -la 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 -la. You yes. know. But now you have to literally call your kids because they're miles away. Like, why aren't you home yet? You know, it shouldn't be like this. You know, you can't, you shouldn't have to wonder. Are my kids and out doing something they shouldn't have? You know, I wish things were the way they used to be, but unfortunately, with the progression, it comes with bad things too. Yeah, my my daughter went um, to the park last week with her girlfriend, and my my husband had dropped her off. And as he was pulling away, he noticed a couple guys in a truck just kind of driving by slow. Well, you know, that's that's a red flag. Yeah. So, of course, he's going to drive around and he's going to see what this truck is doing. And it's, it's so sad because you can't just drop your kids off in the park. You know, you got to watch them and you have to worry about other people, you know, preying on your children. Mm -hmm. You know, it, them being miles away. It's not like us when we go ride our bike, you know, five miles away and then come home by dinner. You yeah. know, now you just, you got to watch them. You got to. I'm telling you, you should write a book. You should call it the electronic etiquette for parents. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. There you go. Next desert adventure. There you go. <laughs> Ooh, I would I, I would fully support that on Kickstarter if there was one. <laughs> I would. It's an idea. Yeah. Parents, I mean, parents, they're like, oh, my kid plays video games. My mom, when, when, I, when I got into video games the first time, my, it was because of my mother. She played video games with us. She kicked our butts in Tetris, like left and right. But she she got involved. She knew what we were playing. She knew what we what she was buying for us. Parents these days, they're like, oh, oh you want this game short here. You don't bother look at the rated M for mature, why it's rated M for mature, blood, gore, violence, partial nudity, drug use, language, whatever. They don't look. They just buy because their kids want, just to make them satisfied. You know, if people have a hard time telling their kids no. Some people, not all. I tell my kids no all the time, but, you know, it's, I, get, I get fought with for it. <laughs> but... If I tell Gina no, she's like, I don't care, do it, boss. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny you say yeah. that, Josh. Like, uh, my dad actually, I was 13 years old, and my dad, um, I mean, I played video games like Donkey Kong, you know, like nothing, um, nothing I would consider violent by any means. And then my dad buys an Xbox, uh, the first, you know, Xbox in Halo. 
And he's like, this is for you, but before you're allowed to play it, I'm going to play it <laughs> and tell you if it's okay. And Because, I, I mean, it was 13. So And so he played the whole entire Halo campaign <laughs> before I was able to play it. And it drove me insane, but I was like, you know, maybe that wasn't such a bad idea. Because then he knew the whole content, you know. And, he was right in doing so. Yeah. Major props, major props to Dad for that one. <laughs> and yeah. then he, he ended up liking it, but <laughs> that I couldn't get him off of it. <laughs> but yeah. But, I mean, that's the kids are buying these games. Like when Mortal Kombat came out on the Sega Genesis, I wanted it. My mom goes, "Okay, I want to watch you play it." I said, "Okay." She bought it, brought it home, popped it in the Sega Genesis, and of course, flipped it on, started playing. She goes, "They're fighting, and you're killing them." I was like. Yes. And then weeks later, I found the blood code. A, B, A, C, A, B, B. Put the whole new perspective in my mother's mind. Because I said, Mom, come check this out. And she goes, you get one hour of this per week. This is really, really gory. I was like, all right. And I can take an hour. Because if I said, if I fought her, she would have taken it and sold it. Because it was too violent. So she gave me at least an hour a week. So, and she told me. She, even my, like my cousins and I would play wrestling. And I would throw him around the house or out in the yard. And they, she told us, you know, you guys cannot mimic what you do on TV. You're going to get hurt. This is not right. Or this is going up to somebody grabbing them by their throat and trying to rip their head off with their spine hanging out like you're at Sub-Zero is illegal. You can't do this. Parents have to educate. And that's, the, that's I'm strong with that. I can do it. Well, I know you, you can just blow dust at somebody and turn them into you know, a pile right. of ash. But, I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure how to even react to that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I'm just like, I just got told by the actual Sony Blade that she can kill me and get away with it. How, how, how do you respond to this? You don't. You go, yes, ma'am, and then you just move on. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm out of here. <laughs> and I mean, even, even with Mortal Kombat, I noticed when I was playing a lot in the arcade, a lot of the girls wouldn't even bother touching Johnny Cage or Scorpion. They would always take Sonya. And I'd always see them doing that little handstand, flip around, grab them by the throat with their legs, and flip them over. You know, I like. I it, was that. You, I was that girl. <laughs> like, I'm it was girl. iconic. Yeah. And it yeah. was iconic. You know, and that's one thing that made me stand out when I was like, Carrie Hoskins. I was like, Kiss of death. I'm gonna have to talk to her. <laughs> you know, and you, you became an icon. Maybe the, maybe the girls all just knew that Sony was the strongest player if you knew how to play her. Well. That's debatable. Oh, John, John Tobias told me she's the strongest player if you can play her right. Her, in Mortal Kombat 1, her uh, handstand grab where you flip, flip over your legs was, was extremely powerful. And the square punch where she went up in the air and boom, boom, boom to the other side was extremely powerful. So, uh, you know what? I think I'm going to go with the bias on this one. He wants to check me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, people don't realize it's this with girl gamers. They, they actually have a lot more focus and a lot more potential to succeed in a gaming tournament than most guys do. But what really, pardon my French, but pisses me off the most is women gamers and girl gamers are shunned upon. They always get the crap in the stick. And it bothers me because I, my daughter was going to get possibly scouted by a female gaming clan. And I warned her, you will get trolled. You will get talked about. Are you prepared for this? She goes, no. I said, then I suggest you not do it until you think you are ready. The, the part that I always, the stick I always get is, you'll be a distraction, and I think that is the funniest thing in the world. The, you know, I hope so. Yeah, I, they're, they're, they're like, out. well, it's a man's world, and you'll just be a distraction. I'm like, let me be a distraction, <laughs> you know? Like, I don't, I don't, I never understood that at, a, at all, um, but, you know, us as women in general uh, have got, like, you know, the crappy end of the stick for a while anyway. So, uh, I mean, I, I think it's about time that not only female gamers, but women in general, we get more recognition for the work that we put in the media. So Even even with female characters with games these days, back in the day, Sonya and Katana and Melina were forces to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. But female game characters that are made now, instead of using mocap, and you're doing a lot of digital production for characters instead of using human beings. Um, that are alive. I mean, just throwing that out there. <laughs> that one, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name one better. Rumble Roses. Rumble I, Roses. These I don't characters know what that are, is. These characters are made with overflawed chest pieces, so to speak, as I'll just call them. They're making them overly abundant and trying to make them look more of 
uh, an object than they are of an actual character. And that's what really gets me. Is do we really have to go overdone? Like Lara Croft, you know, let's get let's, let's go there with Tomb Raider. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, short shorts, really tight t-shirt, and you know, they don't have to make them overly abundant object. I mean, yeah, they're a woman. They're a woman. Make them look nice, but don't go overboard. Where, oh my God, it's a girl character. Let me just play here for hours. It doesn't work that way. I can't stand that. Well, because they're playing to their audience now, Josh, or so-called so-called audience. Unfortunately. Yeah. So it's like TNA always sells more. Pretty yeah. much is what it's boiling down to, and that's what you know when female characters in games are evolving into these days. Back in the day, you. People like people would play Mortal Kombat. Oh, and then she evolved. What Melina Katana in two, Melina. When you used her in two, she oh she was a great looking character. She has great legs and she took, until she took off mask and you saw the the Baraka looking teeth that blades for teeth. I'm like oh wait a minute, no, oh, it didn't work like that. You know it it shouldn't be like that. And that's why I wanted to get also get another thing Gina talked about to get a female's perspective who has been in the industry before and get your perspective on that too. Yeah. <clears throat> Ooh. That silence. <laughs> my, my husky's outside barking like crazy at the name. We can't hear it. It's fine. Thank you. <laughs> but so, from your from your perspective, since you are a female who has been in the industry, um, I'm not sure how much of games you have seen that progress up until you know this year. Um, do you are you a firm believer that it's been a TNA value for female characters in games nowadays? Am I what? Are you a firm believer, like you had said, it's, it's mostly TNA for that for product value? Um, I'm not a firm believer in it, but I know that it sells. I mean, it's it's life. That's such as life, you what, know. What would you like to see differently? Um, I don't know. I'm 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 not a game designer. I don't I don't know the market as well as. Um, you know, your average person or your, your person who designs games. So I just, I know the market right now is TNA and, and that's what's selling. You know, I think back in the day when Sony, she didn't have, she wasn't as gladly uh, dressed as uh, they are now, but, um, and I think it was just her sheer strength that really attracted people. Um, now it's, they kind of just went over that and just decided to dress them, you know, something that's going to get more attention. Let's say Ed Boone and John Tobias were to come to you next week and say, we want to bring back the old Sony Blade, the strong, the fierce, the not scantily clad, the pure ass kicker, and they wanted your advice. What would you tell them? That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> it would. It would. It would be great if you just brought a female character back who was playing because she was strong, you know. And I, I think it was, we we just got video. We bombed got by video, video bombed by her daughter. <laughs> yeah. She walked by and waved. You gotta come and say hi now. Hi. Hi. Hello. This is Leah. Hi. Hi. Down. <laughs> so, Leah, what do you think about your mom playing Sonya Blade in Mortal Kombat? What? What do you think about uh, me playing Sonya? Uh, <laughs> your mom was the best female fighter in a video game ever. Ever. She, she was never the played it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you Oh, it's an app. Then I, I put it on Funwell. <laughs> There's an, an arcade here that used to have it. Ah. Uh, oh. And, and you know, it's good that you know your child knows what you've done, and know that just it's just a game. And I, I really admire that. I really do admire that about you. Well, can't really hide much these days with the internet around. So. That is indeed true. Yeah. <laughs> She's trying to bow out. Slowly, because <laughs> she just walked by. I was like, "Hi," and I'm like, "Where that? What the? Oh, hey, there she goes." <laughs> That's why I came in my room because I have company outside, and they would all sit behind me to like make faces and whatever at the camera. I'm like, "Guys, I gotta go. I gotta go do this job. I'll see you later." <laughs> um, 
So if you have some important messages to your fans out there who still look up to you as Sonya Blade, share them. Um, I know. Stand up for what's right. Don't be afraid to voice your opinion. Um, if your gut is telling you to do one thing and your actions are, are something else, it's not going to, it's not going to give you what you need. Um, you got to listen to your gut. You got to listen to your gut and you know, you know what's right and what's wrong. Um, make sure you know that that difference between fantasy and reality and teach it to your kids when you have kids, you know, go for your dreams and don't let anybody stop you, but make sure you do it right. Very wise Gina, word. Gina, anything else you want to say before you start wrapping up? No, uh, I'm just, I'm thrilled that I got to meet you and it's fantastic to meet somebody who I've idolized since I was like literally like four years old. So, like, <laughs> so uh, it's, it's been an amazing and I'm so glad that you, you share our vision and rise up and, and as a community and as a company. So, um, and I, yeah, thank you so much for your time is all I have to say. Miss, I you. Miss Carrie, I gotta tell you, I grew up playing Mortal Kombat and I didn't know if I'd ever get this far in my life where I would be speaking to anybody who was involved in the game. And the fact that you've taken out your time to talk with Gina and myself is incredible. We are truly honored as, as Gina and I are both honored and so is Rise Up to have you a part of the vision that we all share. And we, we are seriously, I can't stress this enough, we are seriously honored to have you as our first guest on our video game in that safety segment. We truly appreciate your time. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys reaching out and um, keep on doing what you're doing because what you're doing is right and um, I'll help you out in any way I can. Absolutely. Okay. Thank um, you for what you do. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And guys, you can find this interview. Um, we will have a post on riseup.com on our YouTube page. Is it Rise Up Gaming, Gina? If I yep. believe. Yep. Yeah. We'll be pushing it around. We'll make sure we have it on Ms. Hos uh, Ms. Hoskins. Uh, Facebook page. I'll get it up on there for her. And tomorrow will be John Parrish and Scott Patterson. Um, we will have that up tomorrow evening. Once again, Rise Up Gaming thanks Miss Carrie Hoskins Branson for her truly awesome time and being a great person. Thank you. We'll see you guys soon and take care. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. bye.